skateboarding I decided to enhance the life counter by adding in the ability to also count poison. The reason why poison counters is a nice little exercise to try is that it's a simple introduction to state machines. Poison counting only happens in a rare variety of circumstances, so I only want to show poison counters when poison is actually added to somebody, otherwise I want to keep them out of the way. That the left and right buttons select and the up and down buttons change values. So I'm going to show you a very simple state machine that shows this in practice. Here's the diagram of what we're trying to build here. We can see uh, we start at, at um, state life 1, so the up and down buttons will affect the life 1 value. Pressing right, uh, follow the arrow to the right, takes us to state life 2. Pressing it right again takes us to state poison 2. Pressing it right again takes it back to state life 2. Um, I found in my testing it was actually quite good to have this little uh, right button toggle thing because it meant that if you accidentally went to poison 2 you could uh, just push the button again and it would loop back back to life 2 and I found that was um, that just felt a little more natural and conversely you can see what happens if we push the left buttons So we're going to build on the code that we used in the previous example. We start by setting up life counters for player 1 and player 2. These are integers because theoretically they can become quite large numbers. We define uh, poison counters for player 1 and player 2. These can be bytes because the valid range is 0 to 10. This is our reset counter, which just keeps track of how long we've been holding down the reset button for. This is a new variable for containing the current state that we're in. Each state has a particular number. We'll have a look at the values for those states now. Here are our four states. We've given them a nice text label using a define these can be any number we like. We could change these numbers and have no adverse effect on the code whatsoever. This code sets the input and output pins and turns the backlight on. We set up the LCD display by telling the liquid crystal library we have a 16 column by 2 line display and we output the very first line the life counter. Then we update the life counts. We'll talk about that function in a second. This code here strobes the backlight to let the user know that the life counter is ready. Here is our loop function. We initialize a variable and we read the current state of the buttons. If no buttons press, we reset the reset counter. Otherwise, if a button was just pressed, then we do something different depending upon the current state we're in. We'll come back to this one in a minute. Otherwise, if the select button is being held down, then we strobe the backlight once and increase the reset counter. 
If the reset counter is greater than 10, then that means the reset button has been held down for quite some time. What we do here is we reset all of the values and update the life counts. Finally, we clear out any of the button pressed or button released flags, just so that we don't process a button event twice. Then we have a short delay to avoid double presses on the buttons. Let's talk about the finite state machine structure. What we're doing here is using switch to get the current state, and then we call a different function depending on the current state. Once that's all done, we then update the display. State machines then make things very easy. Inside this particular function, that is called when the state is state life 1, we look at what the current button is and then switch to different actions using the switch case block depending on which button was pressed. Button left changes to state poison 1. Button right changes to state life 2. And the up and down buttons increase and decrease the life respectively. Notice that the code for state life 2 is very similar in a way. The left and right buttons change to different states and the up and down buttons increase and decrease life number 2. These two functions are called for the corresponding poison state. In state poison 1, both the left and right buttons return to state life 1. We have also added a check to ensure that the poison counter does not go below zero. I'll let you work out how state poison 2 works. What I like about state machines is that I can concentrate on just what is happening when the program is in a particular state, without any of the complexity of worrying what is happening elsewhere. This code updates the display with the life and poison values. The cursor is sent to the first column of the second line on the display. This section is for the life and poison counters for player 1. If player 1 has lost the game, their life is less than or equal to 0, or their poison count is greater than 10, then we simply output 5x's and then we don't do anything else for player 1. If player 1's life total is greater than 99 then we simply print out 99. Again the life counter will continue to count higher than 99 but we only ever want to display two digits. If the life count is less than 99 then we do one further check. If player 1's life is less than 10, then we add in a leading space. Then we print out the life total. These three lines decide which of the state marker symbols to output. These symbols tell the user which value will be changed by pressing the up and down keys. If we are in state life 1, then we simply print an asterisk followed by a space. Otherwise, if we're in state poison 1, then we print a space followed by a caret. This puts a symbol close to the value that will be changed. If we're in neither of those states, we simply print two spaces. This line decides whether or not to output the poison value. If we're in state poison 1, or if the poison count for player 1 is greater than 0, then we output a poison value. If there's no poison value to be displayed, we simply output a space. With player 2 we do everything in reverse. 